I was curious about um, the challenge of writing dialogue, uh, especially for um, a specific, you know, uh, type of person from a certain education class, and you know, the I feel like a, it would be um, a, a difficult area to to work in uh, without a lot of studying of I don't know the 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 way that they speak, you right. know, and then to make sure that you did it, you know, how, what kind of preparation did you get? Yeah, and you know, even like as I said, Mary's mother's from New York and her father's from Virginia, so even though they're both slaves, I'm from New York. You may have noticed when I was reading Mary's voice, you didn't believe I was from Virginia, did you, right? I mean, <laughs> that, that there would be as much difference in those voices. With, the, with Mary and her family, it was less difficult for me because my specialty as an English professor was African American literature. So I'd read a lot of slave narratives and essays and poems, and I felt well immersed in that. There were other characters who were much harder. There's a pretty significant member of the spy network named McNiven, who's a Scottish immigrant. Boy, was I at a loss there. I mean, I, like, I, I listened to sound files, I read things, I just was trying to, on the one hand, capture something that would sound like a Scottish immigrant, but not actually as much as a Scottish immigrant would, because those of you who are writers know, if you put really strong accents on the page, it actually gets in the way of readers. I can tell you that there were times when I would go through the manuscript in revision, I wish that Professor Tataki could hear me say this, like revision is the most important thing as a writer. That um, I would go through the manuscript in revision and just look at one character's dialogue. So every time McNiven spoke or every time Mary's father spoke and make sure that I was consistent in whatever patterning I was doing in their dialogue the whole way through. That really just letting them speak consistently was an important part of it. And then sometimes you can't do it. Like, New England, if you know a hard Maine New England accent, yeah. you couldn't do it on a page. There's one, he's only in there for a scene, but he's, he, there's one scene, and I just have Mary say, I recognized his New England accent. Because if, it's like, my shoes are, you can't do it. It just looks terrible on the page. So, so that's also the question of like, where do you fake it, and where do you try and get authentically on the page? Um, the, the, the Scottish accent, I was exceedingly lucky that uh, the book was published at the same time in the US and in the UK, and my UK editor gave me notes at the same time as the US editor did. And at one point, she said about the Scottish character, I realized that he's been in the United States for a while, so maybe he would say this, but it's just hard to believe a Scotsman would. And I thought, oh, no American would say that. That was me trying to sound Scottish. I won't tell him that, but I'm just <laughs> so I think also trusted friends are, are good soft. Sorry. Other 